Okay, we're going to be looking at some extra camera features now uh, that are available within view. And what the first thing is I'm going to do is just load in a couple of objects uh, just so we can use them as a reference uh, as just sort of a simple scene and it doesn't have to be anything complex. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and position our camera. Just kind of move that out of the way uh, just so we can fully see the scene right now. Uh, now one thing we can do, there's a couple of uh, ways to do this, uh, but if we take a look at this little disc right here, what we can do is store our camera. And as you can see, it's uh, creating multiple cameras. If we expand our main camera view, we have camera one and camera two, uh, which it's just created. Every time we click on this disc, it will create a new camera, so now we have camera three. And what we can actually do is scrub through these cameras. Uh, right now it says camera or it lists one above uh, just uh, below the disk and that is our top camera. We move to the next one it's camera one and what we can do is actually go ahead and reposition this camera and I'm just gonna pull it out and we can actually see the other camera in the view now and I'm going to go to our next camera and sort of position that where I want it and sort of move that back and we're just gonna make it so it's not really facing the scene and now I'm gonna go to our next camera which is camera 3 kinda of face that up towards the sky so now I've created uh, three new cameras uh, along with the other two cameras that we have and uh, there's also another way you can do this to create uh, more cameras we can go up to this uh, view on top of our little preview here this, uh, where it says camera 3 which is listing the current camera and if we right mouse click we can actually select our cameras that we want to be previewing and actually have selected so I can select camera 1 as you can show uh, 2 down here or I can select camera 3 and it's a little bit easier to actually go up here and right mouse click and select your camera that you want to manage because um, with this number down here it can be a little confusing right now it says 2 where it's actually at camera 1 uh, so that can be a bit confusing uh, but we can go ahead and also store a camera here the same as hitting the disk and we can go to camera if we have one selected I will select camera 3 go to camera and that's just making sure that uh, we have it selected so let's say we have a sphere selected and we can't find the camera if we're looking at a different view uh, we could uh, go to camera which is going to select our camera as opposed to what other object we had in the scene uh, but what we can also do is manage our cameras in here and with the camera manager uh, we can either create new cameras or we can select uh, already existing ones and delete them uh, but if I just go up here and we have main camera I'm going to change this to or type in main camera 2 and click OK and now we have main camera 2 in the scene so we could also add cameras that way if we want to specifically name them uh, of course we can always within the layers panel actually uh, type in a name for our camera so we can do that as well uh, but it is a nice little feature if you want to be managing your cameras and deleting them in a different window uh, other than your uh, layers panel there's also another really neat trick uh, and that is has to do with the camera focal if we take a look at our uh, focal right now it's actually uh, more of our focus in our focal uh, we have this little sort of dot in front and that is where our camera is looking and pretty much our focus and since we actually don't have that camera selected right now uh, the one that we're editing the focal we'll go ahead and just select it which is going to be our main camera and I'm just gonna move it just a little bit out of the way and I want main camera selected uh, in our view and I'm just going to position this so we can see our objects and now zoom back out in our viewport and we can see that we have this focal here and if we select this square, we can actually move it around. And actually, we're going to have to zoom in just a little bit more to actually select the square. But now we can select the square, and we see we have some options up here. We either have always visible on, and we have focus, which we can actually select a link. So I'm going to select sphere. And what that's actually going to do is link uh, the focus of this camera to the sphere. So no matter where I move this camera, the f it will always be focused on our sphere and we can see that the focal length is uh, moving along with the camera and will always make it so that that sphere is actually in focus. If I let go, I'll just go ahead and move that just a bit, select that, 
and we can see uh, that it will move along with the camera and get longer and uh, shorter so we'll always have that in focus if we rotate that down so we can actually see the sphere we can actually animate this as well uh, this will move along with an animation so if I go to animate display timeline I'm gonna go to four seconds or a little beyond it and just pull our camera back and position it upwards just a little and the reason why it, it didn't look like it was sticking on the sphere before was that because uh, it was actually tilted down we couldn't actually see it in the view uh, but right now if I scrub through the animation you'll see that focal length stays about the same and now depending uh, no matter what our blur setting is at that sphere will always be in view and will not be out of focus so that's a neat little thing you can do uh, within your animations unfortunately you cannot uh, turn it on and off within a sequence uh, but one thing you can do is assign another camera uh, link it to the main camera and then have that one not positioned in that way during halfway during the animation you can break one camera off and then just do uh, two renders starting fr uh, from the beginning with the, the linked camera and then uh, the rest of the animation you would render from the other camera uh, just as long as they're in the same position it should work alright and then you can just unparent it uh, a little bit through the animation so it's kind of a neat little thing you can do